Hello, I'm Kobe Kushner. I'm a mining analyst here at Red Cloud Securities. Thank you, Pear Tree, for sponsoring this session. We're about to hear from Blaine of Pacific Ridge Exploration. This is a copper gold explorer that's got four projects in BC and a perspective from Porphyries. Another four are in Yukon. Uh, Blaine, you've got about 15 minutes, which will follow with five minutes of Q&A. Viewers, feel free to ask your questions at any time. Take it away, Blaine. Great. Thanks, Colby. Uh, and thank you, Pear Tree. Uh, thank you, everyone, for listening in. My name is Blaine Monahan. I'm the president and CEO of Pacific Ridge Exploration. We are focused on copper gold projects in BC, and our goal is to become BC's leading copper gold exploration company. Forward-looking statements, I will be making many, so please be forewarned. So Pacific Ridge, as I mentioned, our goal is to become BC's leading copper gold exploration company. Historically, we've been focused on gold projects in the Yukon. We pivoted to, to copper in BC in 2020. We signed an option agreement with Santerra where we can earn up to 75% in both Clyol and Redton. Since then, we've acquired two more copper gold projects, RDP, which we recently optioned out to Antifagasta. They can earn up to 75% by spending 10 million and delivering a preliminary economic assessment report in eight years. And Onho uh, was acquired just last month, and that's located about 15 kilometers to the west of Mount Milligan. Clyola is our, our flagship. Uh, we did not drill this in 2020 when we first acquired it, but we did do a deeper penetrating IP survey, which showed to us that there's potential to expand the Clio main zone where most of the historical drilling had been focused. Of that drilling, almost all of it was near surface, focused on a near surface magnetite scarn zone. And in 2006, the first deep drill hole was drilled, uh, which was followed up by Tech in 2015, who did four more holes. We launched our maiden drill program there this summer. We completed three holes in 1500 meters. All three holes returned broadly mineralized, uh, broad intervals of copper gold mineralization and were some of the best intervals returned to date on Clayul. Uh, this sets the stage for a much more expanded drill program this year. We're looking to drill at least 5,000 meters, uh, targeting the Clayul main zone and two adjacent targets that we identified in that IP survey in 2020 called Clio West and Clio East. In addition to the Clio main zone, there's four other targets that occur along a four kilometer mineralized trend. And we'll look to do some additional IP and an airborne mag survey this year. So it's gonna be a very busy year. Uh, we expect to get into Clio sometime in June. We can work there till the end of September, beginning of October. And while we have a drill program taking place at Clio, there will also be a drill program at RDP. We will be the operator for that project and we'll be basing operations for RDP out of Clio. So a lot of synergies there. Um, we are very lucky to acquire or the, the option to acquire 75% interest in Clio and Renton from Centera in 2020. At the time, copper was just slightly north of $2. We were always very bullish on the price of copper. Um, and it's fair to say that over the last decade, there hasn't been a lot of love for these sort of projects in BC, uh, but we're seeing a lot more interest in these sort of projects now. We're seeing, uh, you know, Newcrest has acquired Predium, Newmont acquired GT Gold. Uh, we're seeing a lot of senior structure joint venture or make st strategic investments. So I expect that that level of activity is going to continue to grow. Uh, we're seeing a lot of obviously increased political risk in South America and some environmental risk. And BC has great exploration potential that really hasn't been explored for the past decade. A little bit on the management and board. I took over in January of last year from Jerry Carlson. He's now the executive chairman. Uh, a very busy year for us last year. We started last year at about five cents, uh, ended at about 40 cents. We raised $2.6 million for that our first ever drill program at Clayul. We strengthened our board. We added uh, Gary Baschuk, who's presently with Pear Tree Securities, and Borden Putnam, who has a lot of experience with uh, on the buy side in the States and also serves on the board of Skeena. When I approached Borden about joining the board, he was quite interested, but what he was looking for was the formation of a technical committee and to head it. So I, I was very pleased with that idea. And since then we've put together just a, a great technical committee uh, these individuals meet on almost a, a monthly basis. Uh, they're, they're experts in their own right with respect to whether it's geophysics or porphyry exploration in BC. And as a matter of fact, there's a technical committee meeting later today to look over the, the plan targets 
for Clyule in 2022. Gives you a sense of where we are. Um, as I mentioned, we started last year at about five cents, closed at about 40. We have achieved a high of 58 cents on the back of our first two drill results. We've come off uh, since then, and largely that's because our third drill hole, while really quite good, frankly, just wasn't as good as the first two. But I point out that the first two drill holes were uh, big beats as far as broader intervals, higher grade copper gold mineralization. While the third hole was still broadly mineralized from top to bottom, its grades just weren't as high as the first two. So I think the market expectations were a little bit high. Uh, I still think we're obviously now even more attractive than we were after this pullback. Today, our market cap is about 15 million Canadian. Pretty strong, uh, strong shareholder base. Crestcat out of Denver owns about 14%. And Delphi, a German fund, has about 13%. So of the shares out, and there aren't that many, about 56.2 million, I can account for about half those shares on one hand. So a little bit about the history. You can see, obviously, our copper gold projects in BC. Kyle is a focus. RDP is optioned out to Antofagasta. Onho is the newest acquisition. We'll probably do a little bit of work there. We're looking to refine targets. Uh, Red Tin is adjacent to Northwest Copper's Quanica. I don't know if we have any plans there this year, but uh, it's going to be a very busy year for us. The Yukon, I mentioned, that these are legacy projects. We do have an option deal on Fire Lake that's optioned out to a private British company called BMC. They have one final $850,000 payment to make to us this year. And then, of course, we have Mariposa, Eureka, and Gold Cap. Mariposa was a flagship project for us one time. In the last Yukon Gold Rush, we spent about $7 million there and made a new discovery, uh, some pretty good intercepts. At some point in time, I would like to spin these assets out, uh, but I think we still need one solid gold asset to make a flagship for that new co. So where we are at Clio, we're about 350 kilometers northwest of Prince George. Infrastructure is quite good. We're only about five kilometers off the Almanica mining road and an adjacent power line that serves chemists. We're up in the Alpine, about 1,700 meters in elevation. So at present, it is helicopter supported, but it's a short hop from that Almanica mining road to our, our camp. Um, one of the issues we faced last year, and we got in there a little bit later, uh, we weren't able to achieve the meters we were looking for because of forest fires in BC. It shut down that access road for a period of time. So we weren't able to get in there until August. And also there, were, there was a problem with qualified drillers. Uh, we weren't able to achieve the sort of meters we were looking for. So to mitigate that, we have amended or in the process of amending our permit so we can get in there earlier. We're looking to get in, the, get in there in June. And we've also sent out RFPs to the drillers we would like to work with. We've received some bids back and we'll be making that decision within the next few weeks. So those two things, should ensure that we'll be able to achieve the meters we want to drill this year, which is at least 5,000 meters with two drill rigs at Clio. A lot of reasons why we like Clio. We, we did want to make the shift to copper. Uh, it, it had returned historically some really good intercepts. As I mentioned, most of the drilling in the past was shallow, focused on a, a near surface copper magnetite uh, scarn zone. The first deep drill hole was drilled by Geoinformatics in 2006, and it returned 218 meters of 0.57 copper equivalent or 0.88 gold equivalent. Tech had an option on it in 2014, 2015. They completed four holes and their best hole was 245 meters of 0.52 copper equivalent or 0.81 gram per ton gold equivalent. So, so based on the limited amount of deep drilling, um, based on you know, analogs or you know, as far as deposits and mines that we felt were in a similar geological environment, we felt there was great potential to expand the size of this and to make a new copper gold porphyry discovery in BC. Uh, we completed our first program last year and you can see our first two holes, or pardon me, our first three holes or the only three holes we drilled last year. The first two, all of the holes were significantly better than what's been returned historically, but the first two holes were, were significantly better as far as grade than what's been returned historically. So I think that's what really set up the market's expectations that the third hole would uh, be as good. So although not as good, um, still compares very, very favorable to those historic deeper drill holes. 
I mentioned we completed that IP survey in 2020. It looked to expand the, the footprint of the Clio main zone and also identified those two adjacent targets, Clio West, Clio East. They've never been tested. We will test them this year. And now we're talking about a 1.5 kilometer strike length. And of course, there's a number of other potential porphyry centers along a four kilometer mineralized trend that will look to further refine this year also. Where we are, we're in the Quenel Trough. We're in Sierra Clayul. It's about 50 kilometers south of Santeris Chemist. RDP, it was a great acquisition for us because it is located quite close to Clayul. It's 40 kilometers to the west. So while we're advancing Clayul, we can maintain our camp there and, and easily uh, mobilize to RDP. You can see our red tin to the south that adjoins Quanica. And then Onho, our newest acquisition, is about 15 kilometers to the west of Mount Milligan. Just a good idea of, of sort of where we are with respect to infrastructure. So we're looking west here. We can see our Clio main zone is in this sort of east-west saddle. Uh, you can see the Almanica mining road to the northeast uh, that serves chemists to the north. This is a very well-traveled road. It, forestry is very active in this region. Uh, so Although not the best, it's actually quite good for being in this region of Northwest BC. We're only five kilometers off that road and power. The thought being, of course, that if we can continue to have success with this year's program, then we'd start looking at perhaps driving a road into this project, which would obviously increase our exploration season and reduce costs related to helicopter support. And what we do is we drive up this road and we stage from Johansson Lake, and then we helicopter and set up our camp up in the Alpine. So a very successful program last year. Uh, every hole returned significant copper gold mineralization from top to bottom, including some higher grade intervals. Uh, one of the issues we faced last year also, uh, in addition to the, the drillers, uh, one of our pads failed. So the first hole, hole 36, did not reach target depth. We were in uh, a late mineral intrusion at the bottom of the hole. Uh, we felt that if we were able to get through that intrusion, we would have got back into mineralization. The pad shifted, so we had to pull the hole for safety reasons. The second hole, 37, that was successful in extending the footprint of the Clio main zone to the west. And the third hole was a vertical hole from the same pad as 37. We were looking to go deeper, but again, we ran into some technical issues. We encountered difficult ground conditions, which led to problems with the, the drill, and the season was running out, so we just had to pull it. So. All of these holes were mineralized top to bottom. We feel that if we're able to keep going, uh, that there's the potential for higher grade copper zones at depth. And obviously this, this Clio main zone is open in, in many different directions. An example of some of uh, the holes we drilled and some of the higher grade in intervals, and those are the higher grade intervals is what I've been highlighting throughout this presentation and will continue to do so. Uh, so if we're looking at that hole 36, I mean, you know, 291 meters of 0.28 copper, 0.74 gold, uh, 37, you know, 268 meters, pardon me, uh, 320, 360 meters of 0.3 and 0.7, and even hole 38, which a lot of people I, I think were disappointed in. I'm not. I was quite pleased with it but I can understand why after 36 and 37, some people might've been, but really when you're looking at 38, you're still mineralized from top to bottom, including that interval of 300, pardon me, 342 of 0 0.17, 0 0.50. And towards the bottom of the hole, you've got an interval of 88 meters of 0 0.26, 0 0.84. So it was successful in that every hole was mineralized top to bottom, mineralization was higher grade, and we were able to expand the size of the footprint of the Clio main zone to the west and to depth. So there's a lot more work to do this year. And what we'll be looking to do is continue to expand the Clio main zone laterally, look to test the east and the west, and possibly one other target. Uh, we've got a cross section here. So we're showing the, the IP, we're showing our cross sections. It gets a little busy here with these various letters. But these letters correspond with slides, slide 16. These are some of the historical results. We're showing here our 36, 37, and 38. One of the really interesting holes on this one would have been a hole that Peck drilled uh, KL35. That was drilled to the north across a fault. Historically, people felt that that fault might have cut off mineralization. They were successful in getting through the fault and actually encountered a boronite zone at depth. 
So that, that's another very interesting, you know, interesting uh, target to continue to explore. And we'll be looking to infill here and look to push out across that fault again in this year's program. Resistivity is really quite interesting also. Um, and I think it's important to point out when we're looking at hole 36, 37, and 38, we're just showing the higher grade interval in red. Honestly, though, I mean, each, each hole is mineralized uh, from top to bottom. These are the results of some of the historical uh, results. And you can see in the past that uh, most of the drilling was focused on this near surface magnetite uh, scarn zone and getting some pretty good intervals. If you're looking from KL5 to KL93.5, you're looking at a zone that's you know, anywhere from 50 to 60 meters with some pretty good copper and gold values. And then your first hole drilled, deeper hole drilled in 2006 by Geoinformatics. And then of course the tech hole. So prior to us acquiring this, there are only six deep drill holes. Now we've completed three. So there's only nine deep drill holes that have encountered that porphyry style mineralization. So there's a lot more work to do. And as I mentioned, that's our goal this year is that we believe it has the grade. And if we look at this additional slide here, if you look at the copper, you look at the gold, uh, the copper compares favorably, the gold is better. So overall you have higher copper gold values. This is obviously based on only a few holes, but we're confident that it has the grade. This year it's about demonstrating the size. And how we get that is if we're looking at the top image is a plan view, the bottom is a cross section. You know, we believe we can continue to expand the Clio main zone. And then of course you have the Clio West and Clio East targets that haven't been tested. So if we were to envision a 5,000 meter program, you'd probably be looking at about uh, maybe six holes in the Clio main zone, perhaps a hole or two each at Clio West, Clio East, and possibly another target. And of course, that's just one target area within this 60, kilom 60 square kilometer property. Uh, the Clio, as you're looking here, it's kind of in the middle of that four kilometer long mineralized trend. Uh, there isn't as much IP to the Southwest. So we'll be looking to do some more over back bridge this year. And, and if we like what we see, possibly test it and then complete an airborne mag over this entire four kilometer long mineralized trend to look to identify or refine and define future drill targets. So that's really it for us. Um, there, there's so much to talk about, but Kyle is the focus. Uh, we think there's a tremendous potential here for a new discovery in BC. These sort of projects are very much in demand and we're planning our 2022 program right now, but it will be comprised of 5,000 meters, looking to continue to expand the Clio main zone, testing those other targets and refining additional targets. Last but not least, uh, very important for us to explore exploration companies in BC is our agreements and relationships with the local First Nations. We have written agreements with three First Nations. Uh, we work very closely with them and uh, we try to provide as many employment opportunities as possible. Uh, and we work closely with them with respect to wildlife management and mitigating any negative impacts on the environment. And RDP, I guess I'll just talk about it quickly because that, that was a recent transaction with Antofagasta. So there will be two drill programs this year. We will be drilling, we'll, we will be focused on Clio. We'll also be the operator for RDP, but they will be funding that drill program. I mentioned the terms. So very pleased to be partnered up with a senior copper producer. Uh, and again, I think just uh, fits into that narrative that these sort of projects in BC are just increasingly attractive to not only copper miners, but also gold mining. And that's Great. about it for us. So yeah, very excited. Uh, you know, the technical committee is meeting later today to review our drill plans. Uh, I expect to be signing on our drill contractor here shortly. And we're looking really forward to getting back there. And we should be back in there sometime uh, in June with drilling starting sometime late June, early July, and going through to the end of September, early October. All right, great. Thank you for the presentation, Blaine. Um, we have time for maybe one question here. So. Uh, you know, with all the drilling and work going on in 2022, you know, is that, where will that get you by year end? Is that enough to know uh, whether or not this uh, Clio project is gonna, is gonna be economic? What, what are your thoughts there? What are you hoping to get out of this by year end? I think the real goal of this program is to demonstrate to the market that it has size potential. I, I think we, we know it has the grade. Now it's a matter of, can you, uh, 
increase the size of the put, footprint to demonstrate that at a minimum, I think for this sort of project and in BC, you need to demonstrate at least a 250 million ton uh, resort. Mm -hmm. So I, I think we have to at least show that it has that potential. It can, we can outline that sort of footprint that could host that sort of size.